Walking into this gate and entering the area where Jacob himself had that latter dream where God gave him four promises. Come on in. This is a holy site. What we see when we first come in is this double structure of stones and we see this ancient tree which I'll tell you about in a moment and we see this bedrock huge bedrock. I want you to notice, first and foremost, that there's a piece of the bedrock that's standing out. You could see it stands out from the rest of the rock. This rock is flat and it's clear that this part of the rock stands out. Now look at the shape of this. What does this look like to you? Hmm? A lot of people say that it looks like the state of Israel. It does kind of look like the state of Israel. You can see a lot here at the tip and maybe Jerusalem around here, and this is Haifa, and that's the Golan and the Galil. But this isn't Biblical Israel. Biblical Israel is much larger than this. But can you also see that it's sort of the shape of a person? The feet over here tapered at the bottom, and then widening as they get to the hips, and the shoulders over here, and here would be the head. Many people have told me that this sort of looks like the shape of a human person. We don't know for sure. Nobody was here. Nobody is alive today from the time of Jacob's magical dream to be able to tell us that this is 100% certainly the place where Jacob slept. But there's so many things that point to this spot and I'm going to share some of them with you. Jacob collected a number of rocks and put them under his head. And when he woke up, there was one rock under his head. Our commentators explained to us that the rocks combined to one. And this rock, the part that is standing out, is actually a conglomerate. What is a conglomerate? It's a, a number of rocks that have been welded together, usually on the ocean floor, and usually because of a millennia of water weight. But in this case, overnight, Rocks joined together into one, the ones that were under Jacob as he slept in this place. First of all, let's open the Tanakh and let's read what the story is. I'm going to be reading from Bereshit, Genesis, Perk Kafchet, the 28th chapter, verse 10. Vayetze Yaakov mi Bershava, Vayelech Harana. And Jacob left Beersheba and he went toward Haran. And he touched the place and he decided to sleep there because the sun was going down. And he took from the stones of the place and put them under his head and he lay into sleep in that place. And he had a dream. Vihine Sulam Mutsav Arza Virosho Magia Hashamaima. And there was a ladder standing firmly on the ground with its head, its pinnacle reaching the skies. Vihine Malache Elohim Olim Virdimbo. And angels of God are going up and down this ladder. Vihine Hashem Nitzav Elav. And God was at the top of the ladder. Viomer Ani Hashem Eloke Avraham Avicha Veloke Yitzchak. And he said, I am God, the Lord of your father Abraham and the Lord of Isaac. At this point, I'm going to stop and tell you that this is when God gave Jacob four holy promises, four divine treasures that we today are seeing come to fruition. It's an incredible thing. This is the first one. The land upon which you are lying, I will give to you and to your children after you. Now, if you think about the size of a bed, that's not such a big promise. But our 
commentator Rashi, one of the greatest commentators on the Tanakh, explains that all of the land of Israel folded under Jacob to become a part of this promise given to our forefather Jacob. Meaning, if this is the shape of the land of Israel, and this is the rock upon which he was lying, then all of the land of Israel was included in this promise to Jacob that the land will be given to Jacob and to all of his descendants after him. Here's the second promise. And your children will be like the dust of the earth, and they will travel north and south and east and west. And if you think about it, that's what happened to us throughout the generations. Throughout our long 2,000 year diaspora, we went north and south and east and west. And the continuation of the second blessing is And all of the people will and all of the nations will be blessed through your family's seed. Which means during the time that we were scattered all over the world, those that were good to the Jewish people became blessed. And those that were not good to the Jewish people became forgotten. What's interesting is that most of the nations that were good to the Jewish people eventually turned their back on us and became bad to us. And what happened to those same nations? They went from very powerful to almost nothing. Once you turn your back on the Jewish people and you stop blessing them, you will no longer be the superpower of the world. Here comes the third blessing. Are you ready? Hine anochi imach ushmarticha bechol asher telech. Here I am with you, and I shall watch over you wherever you go. God was telling this to Jacob, who was running away from his brother Esau, who wanted to kill him. So God is saying to Jacob, don't worry, I will be with you, and I will watch over you wherever you go. But this blessing is also for Jacob's children, because God promised Jacob, I will watch over you wherever you go. And the Jewish people have succeeded, and thrived, and survived, and here we are today. Here comes the fourth, and in my opinion, maybe the most emotionally moving blessing. This one says, Hashivoticha el ha'adama hazot ki lo e'ezavcha ad asher imasiti et asher dibarti lach. And I shall return you to this land. And I shall not leave you until I have fulfilled this promise that I have made to you. I shall return you to this land. Where are we standing? Where are our feet? Can you imagine that we have the incredible privilege of being returned to this land to be a walking fulfillment of the promise given to Jacob 4,000 years ago? It's an incredible privilege. A few sukim later, just a few verses later, Jacob wakes up. Yaakov mishnato v'yomer, achen yesh Hashem b'makom hazeh. V'anuchi lo yadati. Jacob awakes from his dream and says, God is in this place and I hadn't realized it. V'yira. And he becomes afraid. V'yomer, manora ha'makom hazeh. En zeh ki im bet elokim. V'zeh shar ha'shamayim. He says how awesome this place is. It is none other than a house of God and the gate to heaven. We talked about that connection between heaven and earth. And then in the morning, Jacob wakes up. And he takes the stone which he had placed under his head. And he makes it into an altar and he pours oil above it. And he calls the name of that place Bet-El, the house of God. And the name previously had been Luz.